Uh, let's think a little bit about the paradox of the stone. So uh, we might as well think a little bit about paradoxes first, since this is just one of them. There are lots of paradoxes in philosophy. And it's a little hard to say exactly what a paradox is in a nice, precise, tight definition. Uh, but very, very roughly, a paradox is when you start with something that seems like it's true, and then you reason your way to something that seems like it can't be true. Um, and paradoxes are both fun and a great opportunity to learn something. Because anytime you're in this situation, you know that you've made some kind of mistake and you can learn something. So either the thing you started with that seemed like it was true is really false, or the thing that you thought couldn't be true really is true, or there's something wrong with the way you reasoned from the true seeming thing to the false seeming thing. Um, and learning any one of those uh, is a worthwhile exercise of your time, at least I think so, uh, although I might be biased to philosophy. Uh, so <clears throat> this paradox, unsurprisingly, has to do with a stone. Um, and it usually starts with this question, which you may well have considered before at some point in your lives. Uh, can God create a stone so heavy that God cannot lift it? So well, that's just a question. Nothing seems true or false yet. Uh, but here's something that seems true. It seems like that question only has two possible answers. Those answers are yes and no. It seems like we have to go in one of those two directions. And then it seems like whichever direction we pick, we can reason our way to there is something that God cannot do. So uh, depending on which option we take, so if we say that, yes, God can create a stone so heavy that God cannot lift it, well, then there's something that God cannot do, lift the stone. Right? We just said it's a stone that God cannot lift. So of course, God cannot lift it. There's something that God cannot do. Uh, if we instead say that the answer to this question is no, uh, then there's something else that God cannot do, which is create the stone. Right? We just said that the answer to the question, can God create it, is no. So it must be that God cannot create it. So whichever direction we pick in our answers to this question, we end up saying that there is something that God cannot do. Well, maybe you think that doesn't seem false. There is no paradox here. The reason this is supposed to be a paradox, though, the reason this is supposed to be an intellectually interesting puzzle at all, uh, is that God is supposed to be omnipotent, which is just fancy philosopher talk for all powerful. Right? And we can characterize that in a lot of different ways. We could say, uh, that God's power is unlimited. We could say that God is maximally powerful. But I like omnipotent because it's just one word, so it keeps things simple. Uh, so to get a kind of lock on this concept, if we imagine a spectrum of power with absolutely powerless things all the way on the left, I don't know what a good example of an absolutely powerless thing is, uh, but pick something that you think is powerless. Um, we start there, and then we get gradually more powerful as we go to the right. So. A little bit to the right of completely powerless, we have house cats. Um, this is my cat, and I can assure you that she has almost no power. She can consume cat food. She can occupy space. That's about it. She can't even catch flies. It's, there is not a lot of power going on here. Slightly more powerful, we have you know, reasonably ordinary humans like myself. Um, and then maybe more powerful things, which is superheroes things that can fly and beat up dinosaurs and have powers that I don't have. Right? I have the power to talk about philosophy and uh, occupy space, but maybe that's it. Um, and then if we get all the way to the far end of the spectrum there, to the right side, then we have the omnipotent things. So it sort of makes sense to think that uh, this is a kind of possible property. You just take something that's you know, somewhere in the middle of the spectrum and then keep giving it more and more power, right? the ability to do more and more things, and then eventually, there are no more powers to give it. You've given it all the powers, and it can do anything, and it's omnipotent. OK, so back to our uh, paradox then. The paradox here is really a paradox about power. Right? So you could, you could say, well, it's not at all perplexing that there's something that God cannot do, because God's not omnipotent. That would be one way out of the paradox and pretty simple. But if you think that omnipotence is a possible property, that something could have it, then it turns out that we can generalize our reasoning that we had about the question about God uh, and sort of say of anything that there's at least one thing it can't do. So really nothing can be omnipotent. And maybe you don't care about that because maybe you think there aren't any omnipotent things anyway. But it does tell us something about power. Uh, and in particular, thinking about why people think the paradox works and some possible responses to the paradox can tell us a little bit about uh, what it means to have the power to do something when it's true that you can or can't do something. So it is a useful thing to think about.
I promise. So <clears throat> to put it in terms of the in the terms of a paradox that I started with, we started with something that seems like it has to be true, that the answer to the question is either yes or no. God either can or cannot lift the stone. Right? Um, we're going to end up in a situation where apparently nothing can have that omnipotent property, but that seems like a possible property. Right? If you have something that's not omnipotent, just give it more power, and eventually it'll be omnipotent. Uh, so we started with something that seemed true, ended up with something that seems false. So hopefully we're wrong about one of those things. Otherwise, we've reasoned poorly. Spoiler alert, that's what's happened here. We've reasoned poorly. OK, so we want a general version of the paradox that applies to anything, or at least that's what I want. I think that's the most interesting version. So what we're going to do is we're going to let x be absolutely anything you want. It's just going to function like a variable here. So you can, in fact, it's going to function exactly like a variable here. You can plug in anything you want for x in everything I'm going to say from now on. House cats, humans, God, whatever. So now, here's something that seems like it has to be true, no matter what x is. Either x can create a stone that x cannot lift, or x cannot create a stone that x cannot lift. Right? x either has that power or not. There's no middle ground, uh, or no outside ground, or whatever. Seems like we're stuck with one of those two options. But just as with the original question, we're going to end up uh, getting to a problem for omnipotence. So if x can create the stone, uh, then x is not omnipotent because there's something that x cannot do, which is lift the stone. On the other hand, if x cannot create the stone, this is even more straightforward, right? Then x is not omnipotent because there's something that x cannot do, create the stone, right? So same, same problem as in the original question. We've just replaced God with x here to show that you really can use anything in this uh, paradox here. And of course, from either of those, we're going to get that x is not omnipotent, right? Because if you put the two things on the left side together, you get that x is not omnipotent. If you put the two things on the right side together, you get that x is not omnipotent. So if you think of it sort of uh, like you're choosing a path in a pick your own adventure book right at the top of the slide here, you always end up funneled into the same ending, whichever sort of early option you pick. So it's an inescapable conclusion if this picture is right. And I at least think that's strange. Uh, whatever we pick, anything at all, this podium, my pinky, I don't know, whatever objects you like to pick, um, it can't possibly be omnipotent. No matter how much power you add to it, if you try to make an omnipotent thing, you're going to fail, says the paradox. So let's see if we can find a way out of the paradox, because I want to hang on to omnipotence. So let's see if we can find something that's wrong, an error that we've made somewhere along the way. So. The first way out that I'd like to talk about, there are lots of ways out of this paradox. I'm going to talk about two ways out of this paradox, and then they're going to kind of fuse together like Voltron and give us a super way out. Um, but here's a very classic way out of this paradox. Uh, and that's to say that even omnipotent, all-powerful things can't do things that are impossible. Right? They can't do things that don't even make sense, right? that aren't impossible um, tasks or objects. So to see why this might be a good idea, let's think about an example that's not directly about omnipotence. So imagine that uh, Sarah the sketcher can draw anything. She's not a shoe. She can like, you know, sketch things with a pencil, right? And she's understandably proud of herself. She can draw absolutely anything. But she has a doubter, Dennis. And Dennis gives her a challenge. Dennis says, all right, well, if you can draw anything, draw me a three-sided square. Not a square with at least three sides, that's easy, but a square with exactly three sides. Right? Uh, and this is a challenge that Sarah pretty clearly can't meet. If you try to draw a three-sided three square, you end up with a triangle every time. Trust me. You can run the experiment, but it's definitely going to happen. So <clears throat> it does seem like there's one sense in which Dennis is right. There's a task I've described, drawing a three-sided square. And Sarah can't do that. So there's something she can't do. It's a sketching kind of task. So there's something that she can't draw. Uh, but on the other hand, it seems like this doesn't really take away from Sarah's abilities as an artist. Right? She's still as good at sketching as you can be, or at least as flexible at sketching. Maybe her sketches are terrible. But at least she can sketch um, anything in some important sense. So you might think of putting that point this way. It doesn't seem like her inability to sketch a three-sided square limits her sketching power. Right? There's no more sketching ability that we could give her that would allow her to sketch this impossible object. 
So maybe what we mean when we say that Sarah can draw anything is that she can draw anything that it's possible to draw. Um, and if you think that kind of thinking is right about Sarah's case, if you think, no, Sarah really is as good as you could possibly be, she's really unlimited in her ability to draw, it's just that we've given her something that doesn't really make sense. We've given her the challenge to draw something that is not possible to draw because it's not a real object uh, or even a possible object. If you think that kind of thinking makes sense, you can apply that uh, back to power generally and find a way out of this paradox. So suppose we apply that kind of thinking to power generally, then we can get this understanding of omnipotence, where x is omnipotent just in case x can do anything that it is possible to do. So we're not going to require uh, all powerful beings to do impossible things, like make three-sided squares, or uh, be both above and below average simultaneously, um, or paint the number two red, or there are all sorts of impossible tasks we could come up with, right? Um, so we're not going to require that for omnipotence on this way out. So how does that help us? How does that solve the paradox? How does that allow us to avoid the conclusion that omnipotence is impossible? Uh, well, start by thinking this. Well, if x is omnipotent, then x can lift any possible stone. There's actually, we might quibble with that, but let's suppose we don't quibble with that. Suppose we say, well, x is all powerful, right? So any stone that could actually exist, x would be able to lift that. Uh, because x is still pretty powerful, just can't do impossible things. I shouldn't say pretty powerful, x is incredibly powerful, but just can't do impossible things. So x can lift any possible stone. Well, if that's true, then a stone that x cannot lift is like a three-sided square, right? It's an impossible object because x can lift any possible stone. If there were a stone that x couldn't lift, it would have to be impossible, given our understanding uh, in the first point there. So uh, since that kind of stone is not a possible object, it's impossible to create it. Right? You can't create something that's impossible. Uh, so then we have a situation where x is like Sarah. So Sarah can't draw the three-sided square, but that's an impossible object. So we sort of say, well, that doesn't really count against your sketching power here. X's inability to create this impossible stone doesn't count against X's creating power, doesn't show us that X's power is actually limited, because again, this is our account of omnipotence, right? Just in case X can do anything that is possible to do, and this doesn't go on that list. This goes on the list of impossible things. So if we wanted to show that X is not omnipotent, we would need a possible task that X can't do. And we don't have that here. So that's one, one way out of uh, this dilemma that we've found ourselves in, is you can say, well, omnipotence really means just being able to do whatever it's possible to do. That's the sort of classic solution, I suppose. A more fun solution is to kind of stick to our guns about what omnipotence is and say, no, it's all powerful, all, everything, even impossible things. You can insist, sort of stamp your foot, uh, and insist that omnipotent beings can do impossible things. So then you get this kind of account of omnipotence. X is omnipotent just in case X can do anything at all, including the impossible. So how does this get us out of the paradox, right? It seems like this is how we got in the paradox in the first place, is by thinking this kind of thing, thinking that X could create the stone. But it turns out that if you have this kind of view of omnipotence, you can actually get out of the paradox uh, just as easily and in a way that's more fun. OK. <clears throat> so in this kind of account of omnipotence, true, a stone that x cannot lift is not a possible stone. But that doesn't matter, because an omnipotent x has to do impossible things anyway, or has to be able to do impossible things anyway. Uh, so if x is omnipotent, then x can create that kind of stone. Doesn't matter that it's impossible. Well, here's another thing that's impossible. If x is omnipotent, then lifting a stone that x can't lift must also be an impossible task, right? You can't be any more powerful than x. x can do impossible stuff, right? So if you've got an, a stone that x can't lift, it must just be a stone that's impossible to lift full stop. Nothing could possibly lift it, right? So that's another impossible task. And so you might think, well, sure, that's why we say x can't do it. The trouble, though, is that x can do impossible things, right? So x could create the impossible stone that x can't lift, 
and then just lift it anyway. Right? Because all we've shown is that the stone is impossible to lift. That doesn't show that x can't do it, right? because x can do impossible things. So uh, we can get even weirder, if you like. x could both create and not create the stone, and then both lift and not lift it while drawing a three-sided square. Right? x can do whatever. So it looks like if we insist on this kind of stronger notion of omnipotence, where you even have to be able to do impossible things, we still don't have a problem here. We're still not guaranteed that x is not omnipotent. Uh, and in this case, it's because there really isn't anything that x can't do. So if you think back to the uh, first way out, the problem was, well, there is something that x can't do, this impossible task. But that's not enough to show that x is not omnipotent. We were kind of attacking the because, right? the relationship between there's something x can't do and x is not omnipotent. Here, we don't even get the claim that there's something that x can't do. We get the claim that there's something that's impossible for x to do, but that's no big deal. Uh, so that's the fun way out. You'll notice that there were bigger laughs on the second way out than the first way out, taking that as proof that it's the fun way. It turns out, though, that of these two ways out, um, uh, there are various ways you might object to either one, but we don't really have to pick one. Picking one is more commitment than we need to make. Uh, and if you're in the business of not being wrong, then not making too many commitments is a great idea. So let's, uh, let's fuse these two ways out into a super response to the paradox of the stone. So here's something that seems like it must be true. Either omnipotent beings can do the impossible, or they can't. Right? That has to be true. There's no middle ground there. One of those two things has to be true. Sort of uh, one of our two accounts of omnipotence has to be right. Well, if they can do the impossible, then the left side of the paradox doesn't work because we won't have shown that there's something that x can't do. If they cannot do the impossible, then the right side of the paradox won't work because we'll have shown that there's something x can't do, but it won't be the sort of thing that an, om that an omnipotent being is required to be able to do in order to count as omnipotent. Right? So either way, we have a problem right in the middle of our paradox. There's something wrong with our reasoning from the original disjunction, the original or statement, Either x can create the stone or not. Something wrong with reasoning from that to x is not omnipotent, whichever understanding of omnipotence you pick. So you don't have to commit. You can go either way, and there's no problem here. We could say that there's no paradox after all, or we could say there's a paradox just because it looks confusing, and this is the solution. I don't know how we want to talk about it. But either we've solved the paradox of the stone, or we've proved that it wasn't a paradox, or something like that. Um, so given this kind of disjunctive response, we don't have to pick a particular definition of omnipotence, but we still learn something. We've learned that on these two different accounts, you get two different problems for this paradox. Thank you.